Hello and welcome to what I think is the hardest IGCSE question I have seen in the June 2001 Edexcel IGCSE maths papers. It's a vectors question and these questions are starting to come up a lot more frequently. So if you're going for a grade 9, it's a really good idea that you understand how to solve these questions. So first off, the first thing you'd want to do in any vectors question is trying to find as many vectors that are not actually labeled yet because you could get one or two marks for that. So the first one I'm going to try and find is O to C, which is 2A plus 3B. And that's going to get me one mark. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get an expression for O to P. Now O to P is some fraction of the vector we've just found O to C. So I could write that as X, open brackets, 2A plus 3B, where X is that fraction. And again, once we've done this, I would still insist that you try and find as many vectors as possible. And another one that we can find is A to B. And A to B, we could go from A to O and then O to B, which is minus 2A plus 5B. And again, you're quite likely to get a mark for that as well. So it's always good to try and write as many vectors as you can. And now I can use that vector to find another expression for O to P. So I can write that O to P is 2A plus a to p, which is some fraction y of minus 2a plus 5b. And that's great. Now I've got two expressions for o to p. I can equate them. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to write x is um, multiplied by 2a plus 3b, and that equals 2a plus y lots of minus 2a plus 5b. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to expand these brackets because I want to try and create a collection of A's and B's on both sides, which I can then equate. So I'm going to expand the brackets, and that's going to give me 2XA plus 3XB is equal to 2A minus 2YA plus 5YB. And in doing so, I have now can see clearly which part of my vectors are A's and which are B's. So I'm going to factorize this left-hand side to make it even clearer which part are the A's and which part are the B's. And now that I've done that, I can now equate the coefficients. Because these two expressions for OP are exactly the same, their A parts of their vectors, their A components, must be equal to each other. So I can write that 2x is equal to 2 minus 2y, and again, because these two expressions are equal to each other, it means their B components must be equal to each other. So I could write that 3x must equal 5y. And now look what we have here. We've got a set of simultaneous equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve those by first simplifying the left one by dividing it by 2. I'm then going to write that y is equal to 3x over 5. And then I can substitute that green equation into the blue equation to eliminate the y's, which will give me x is equal to 1 minus 3x over 5. And then what I could do is I can move that 3x over 5 to the other side to get 8x over 5 is equal to 1. And then finally, I can now find an expression for x, which will be x is equal to times by 5, so 5 over 8. So now I know the fraction of that original OP vector that I first created in terms of OC. And you can see it there. I'm going to highlight it now in pink. That is an expression for OP, and it's in terms of x, that fraction, so I could write that OP is equal to X, which is 5 over 8, open brackets, 2A plus 3B. And then all that's left to do is expand those brackets to get a simplified version of the vector OP in terms of A and B. I really hope that helped. 
These questions are extremely challenging, but they are obtainable and they are coming up more frequently. So it's a good idea to understand how to solve them. And also, even if you're not going for a grade nine, you can still pick up a couple of marks just by working out those initial vectors. I have also videos of that exam series. You can click here to watch them. And I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.